before you this morning, Lord, uh, we want you to know that we've got thank you on our hearts. Uh, we're coming upon a, a day where everybody's going to be saying thank you for the, the blessings that they have, Lord. We want to let you know that we are thankful to you for all of our blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. For saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Welcome y'all first. 
I mean, however you got here, whatever it is. Back up. No, I'm just back, back up. I'm not back there we go. We had your head chopped off. Yeah, well, you, you wandered into first and only Southern Baptist Church here in Yuccaville. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, before I forget, no Bible study on Wednesday. Yes. No Bible study. I want to get that before I forget. Or practice. Or, or choir practice. Or choir practice or... No, nothing on Wednesday. So nothing, nothing, nothing on Wednesday. Cook. Do cook. whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Um, are we okay? Happy birthday and uh, and uh, anniversaries here for the month of November. That's uh, this. That's uh, yeah. This is now. <laughs> <laughs> and we as a church are wishing you a blessed Thanksgiving. Whatever you. Whatever you're eating, if you're a prime rib or you're gonna uh -huh. one of the domesticated fowls, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yep, whatever. Turkey. turkey, turkey. That's a domesticated fowl in my book. Oh, okay. <laughs> Try not to use foul language in church, please. Okay. <laughs> we'll try not to have domesticated fowl in church. Either. That's right. Well, we don't. <laughs> No control over <laughs> Although she has tried. Disclaimer. <laughs> That's my main squeeze. <laughs> Alright, we got Sunday service, 1015 every Sunday. Sometimes. Sometimes. And sometimes it's 1015 or earlier or later. later. Never but earlier. generally earlier. never on time. <laughs> Um, 8.45, we got adult Bible study with Pastor Don over in the other room over there. It's awesome. We're doing the book of Mark. And he's on time. Huh? And he's on time. Yeah, exactly. and he's on generally, time. that one's on time. Yeah. We can get into that later. There's <laughs> mitigating circumstances, but it generally happens at 8.45. Also, Janice School, well, we'll do children's ministry, and that's a hot one, boy. That's, that's important. Uh, Wednesday, as I just said, no Bible study. Uh, board of Directors meeting, y'all just had that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what you met on or what you did, but I'm sure it was meaningful. Uh, men's Fellowship coming up. We're still going to have that, right? In yeah. December. In December. We having food, Perry? Or my wife has been slacking. Oh, that's where the food comes from. And you bring it. I see how that works. <laughs> Either way, it's whether it gets here or not. So it's big. And then uh, the following weekend, following Saturday at 10 a.m., will be the Women's Fellowship. That was yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday? Uh -huh. oh, that's right. Because you went for a change. That's good. Good, good. You didn't take any food either, so persona Sorry. not brought a merrily. Sherry Bosdale brought food. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> Okay, and the women's the women's Bible study on Tuesday, two p.m. fourteen hundred for you swabs. <laughs> Joni Fox leading that, and that will be here at the church. Yes. And I'm sure wherever Caro goes, food will food, be present. Food follows, yeah. Well, that's it, Pastor Don. You're gonna? No. Okay. Are you gonna do it? Okay. <laughs> um, <coughs> Chew Bob. Carol. Oh. Okay, Carol. Now we're picking up the shoe boxes and taking them today. Anybody that put money in the shoe boxes, will you let me know so I can get it out? You were not supposed to put money in the shoe boxes. Um, I mean, that's what it says with the instructions, but this is yucca, uh, where we do everything different. We do it the way we want. If there's there money. You go. So, what we've been having you do is make the checks out to the church, and then Barbara will write one check for all our boxes. But uh, so if you made a mistake and put it in there, now's your chance to get it out because it won't do anybody have, good to have a check made out to you to the, the church <laughs> yeah, right. uh, on the other end. Okay, <laughs> so I guess nobody did. Okay, good. Remember, uh, there's a church. She put cash in there. You know, if you put cash, cash leave the cash. I, I, already, I have the cash. Okay. I already had it. We already got it out. You already got it out. Okay, okay. you've been robbed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Wayne, remember church cleanup after church. Church cleanup after church. If you have the time and can 
can set under the auspices of uh, uh, Gloria. God. Oh, God. Okay. God. Now, God in the form of Gloria. This is like our ministry, and if you care to join us and just clean this church, Sandy and I will be leaving right afterwards to get pizza for you guys. Ooh. See, I've got my assignment, and I'm going to do it. Pizza. You have to uh, back up some, or else your head's going to be chopped off. Don't want my head shot. Okay, okay. Where were we? Yeah. Prayer, prayer, prayer. I'm going to start with Joyce. Chris uh, is watching right now. Oh, uh, Chris and Joyce have been really sick this last week. Uh, won't even go into the story about their fecal matter. But it, I've coined a new phrase called fecal matter matters. <laughs> uh, especially when it's all over. Anyway, they're sick. They're in... Uh, Chris is home in bed, I believe, still. Yeah, he's and, watching. And uh, Joyce is in the hospital, and she's just been moved to a facility. So we need to pray for Joyce. Rob uh, Hooper, our third guitar player here, uh, just yesterday came back from... Uh, Wait, he's talking to us. <laughs> Rob. It's Rob. Fix, fix it. Fix it. <laughs> Okay. Um, what about Rob? Okay, Rob just yesterday came back from uh, Northern California. He's he's been in the hospital all this time. He's still recovering. Um, I, I guess in my mind I thought it was a more simple thing, but he went all the way up to Stanford for a very serious uh, heart problem. Yeah, surgery. heart uh, surgery. Well, it wasn't a surgery. It was a it was a it was a Stanford. procedure, but nonetheless it it brought him down. Yeah, Sandy. Yeah, Walt. Walt had a similar thing, and Walt's daughter has a similar thing to this AFib. Uh, I don't fully understand it, but he's, he's recovering. He's home. Harry Hannon uh, went to the hospital. I didn't even know it. I went and visited Joyce, and he was in the hospital all the time, so nobody told us he was there. But he came home yesterday. Now, uh, he's been placed on, on the hospice, uh, but... Um, He's, he's doing well because now they get the actual care that they're going to need. He's not eminent on, on leaving us, but uh, uh, he's going to get more of the care that Eileen and him need by him being on the hospice program. A long story on that. Uh, of course, Peggy, I just mentioned, uh, Susie's daughter, she also has that same AFib, just like Walt. Keep her in her prayers. Uh, Matt Gilford, uh, Gilbert is Chris Steele's nephew, and he's got inoperable cancer, he's on uh, uh, medication for it, I guess, but he, they can't do much about it. We need to pray for a miracle there. Kimberly is a lady that works in an office where I was going through my uh, therapy. Uh, she recognized me from years back and stopped me as I was going out the, the door and said, Pastor, will you pray for my just the way I am because um, I, I'm sad she's lost her son. Not really sure. He got the COVID shot and then he died of a heart attack. So, kind of sad. Uh, 32 years old. Ginger O'Brien is a, Ginger O'Brien is Pastor Curtis's wife. Um, she was cured of cancer. At least God worked a miracle. And, uh, but she now has it back. And so, Curtis is a good friend of mine. He's a pastor uh, over at Meadville. Well, you guys know he, he plays guitar. His wife is the one that plays the harp. She's oh, been here. Wow. So, Joe Taverneris is pain in the butt. No, uh, <laughs> he's recovering from his four-way bypass, or so he says. Okay, <laughs> this is his. This is his. Uh, Thing that he tells everybody so he doesn't have to do anything around here anymore. But no, we always keep Joe in prayer until right now we got to pray that Joe doesn't hang with me and learn stupidity. Um, <laughs> stay, stop doing 
stuff. What about Gio? Well, not here. And Gio is not here today, and that means that Gio's maybe she's catching the creeping crud. We don't know, but uh, the creeping crud's been coming along. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it the flu. You can call it the cold. You can call it uh, if you want to get money on it. You can call it the COVID nineteen. Okay. But uh, I just call it the creeping crud. We've got a whole, whole bunch of it in here. Maybe you, some of the people that caught it, maybe had a light cold. Terry's out today. Terry's out today with it. So I lift up all the people, including Gio and Terry, that uh, are still fighting this creeping crud thing, Lord, uh, including Joyce and, and Chris. Uh, Lord, just work your miracles and, and get everybody well and, and get this stuff out of here and, and maybe I'd assume you take it off the planet but at least get it at, off to another town but take it out of Yucca I pray and of course Angela uh, Chris's or Joyce's um, daughter she's having chemo and she just went through the same creepy crud she went to have a sue they said oh it was COVID uh, Joyce goes there with the same thing and they say it's the flu so you guys figure this out uh, all these people, as we go into our prayer this morning, I do have a prayer report. and a praise report. <coughs> oh, Annette, fine. You finally got her back to She's work. She's right huh? here. I'm right here. <laughs> you know, I knew you were. I was looking at him. It's good. That's that's what a man should do. Keep his wife working. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to bring you up. Uh, let's go through our standard prayer, and then you don't go anywhere, young lady. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, as we lift up these people whose names we just read, Lord, um, just because of the way things are here in Yucca, Lord, it seems like the main thing we're praying for is that these people get over this, this uh, virus that's floating around, Lord, without any complications, Lord. Uh, I remember a couple years ago when we thought that closing the church down was the answer. That didn't work. The answer is, Lord, that you just heal these people when they get it and get it over and get it done with. So, Father, we're thanking you for that. We do lift up Rob and, and Harry uh, and Peggy and, and Matt, Kimberly, Ginger, and, uh, of course, Joe and, and Angela. All these people, Lord, who've come to us for, for prayer, Lord, you know what they need, and Lord, we're asking you to bless them, Lord. Lord, I, I just have, want to make a special prayer right now for those people who lay their life down, the police department, the armed forces, the, the firemen, Lord, that those people that we count on, Lord, to go do things. Uh, and Lord, we're just asking that you continue to bless those people, especially the ones we know, Lord, that you keep them safe, and uh, just put a, put extra angels around them, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good night, Sierra. Sierra, there. I want to pray. Sierra, come up here. Sierra. Could I have the deacons come forward? The Bible says, "If any of you are sick," and I understand this young lady is. Headed off to surgery, correct? Uh -huh. Okay. And the Bible says if any of you sick, headed off to surgery, or for whatever reason, that uh, you go to the church, the elders of the church will lay hands upon him, and and that the prayer that's said in faith will heal that person. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to not turn you over to a surgeon. <coughs> we're going to turn you over to the Lord Jesus Christ, who will be there with that surgeon. Mm -hmm. So, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, as we lay our hands upon Sierra, Lord. Uh, she's well loved in this church, but Lord, she's more loved in, in your presence. And you know, we can't even comprehend the love that you have for this young lady, Lord, or for any of us. But Lord, we know that uh, you love her more than we do. And, and Lord, we know that you're gonna see her through this uh, time in her life, this surgery. And Lord, all the things that's not supposed to be there, get rid of them and all the things that are, Whatever it is, Lord, yeah. we're praying for your presence in that room. We're praying for you to be uh, there alongside of the doctors. And Lord, we're, we're praying, Lord, that when she 
gets when it gets done, she gets through the recovery, Lord, she's made completely 100% well. Amen. So, Father, just as if you were touching her right now, make her well through this surgery or make her well before she even goes into it. Yes. We don't care how you do it, Lord. We're not telling you how because we didn't create the heavens and the earth. You did, Lord, and you created her. So, Father, we lift Sierra up before your presence in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Receive that prayer. Come back and fix my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, you wanted. Oh, wait, Deacon's good. Come on back here. At least four of you. No, I want the bigger ones up here to intimidate the people. Larger Deacon's. Yeah. Larger Deacon's. Bigger ones. Yeah, bigger ones. Thank you, Jesus. We, this is the day of saying thank you to the Lord. And I'm going to say right now, thank you for healing Sierra. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, but Lord, as, as we proceed this morning, I just want to thank you for uh, the many blessings that we get when we give unto you. Lord, uh, just I'm asking now for a blessing over the hearts of each and every giver. Lord, you don't need any money as a gift to you. We don't need any money in the church. But Lord, we could sure use... Uh, the blessings on the hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jerry. Well, because of that creeping crud that's been creeping and crudding around, um, we missed our normal week that we used to do the birthdays. And by the way, I want to say thank you to all the people who uh, participated with, with uh, Pastor Don, and uh, so that Sandy and I got a, a very well-deserved vacation. That was a joke. <laughs> we did we did get an afternoon where we actually were feeling good enough to go uh, get a hamburger at Red Robins. I, I recommend that by the way. It was really good. So if I get my wife to come up here because we had an anniversary. I remembered it. I mean, nobody would have... Cookie, you might have to be here. Anybody else that had an anniversary? Anybody else that had a birthday? All right, come on up. Come on, Sandy. Okay. Okay, what do we got going here? How old are you? We'll be 73 years young. 73, yeah, that's a good age. How about you? 80. 80? You don't look a day over 49, young lady. So I see you drug him up here. You guys have an anniversary going? And a birthday. And a birthday? birthday? Wow, so we got a happy birthday and anniversary to you. I'm also being glorious in the way. Oh, hey, I got a whole other side over here. And you, young lady, how old are you? Oh, never mind. It's our anniversary. It's our anniversary, man. 32, 32 years. This woman went to prison and married me. I used to visit her on weekends. She's still in prison. Thanksgiving Day will be our anniversary. Thanksgiving. 20, 66. Wow. 66. Wow. 
That's hard to beat. We're not even halfway there yet. And you guys. She was only 10 when I married. 38 years. 38, that's good too. Wow. Wow. Is anybody else hiding? <laughs> Happy birthday and anniversary to you. Happy birthday and anniversary to you. Happy birthday and anniversary. Happy birthday and anniversary. To you. And we actually have cake this time. Oh. <laughs> you know, I've told Carl it is a sin to fatten the pastor. She won't listen to me. Go with God, you guys. Thank you, Lord, for the anniversary. Congratulations. This man, this man does, he does. Anything you want done, this man does. Uh, at one point he was beaten over the head. He recovered, how many years did it take you to recover from that? Five years. Five years, speech, hearing, everything. And yet here he is, I am honored put you in as one of my deacons. Amen. Can I get the worship team up here now? <laughs> You're not on in. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Did he? Oh, that's right. He pulled you out of the sand a few yeah. weeks back. Yeah, here. Watch out. I got issues. We all have issues. I like this. That's why we're here. Why we're in the Wow.
I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. We'll be done here in a few minutes. <laughs> Just kidding. Sixty. <laughs> There's something about giving thanks to God. Just wow. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the whole. Give thanks because he is given Jesus Christ, his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he is given Jesus Christ, his son. Let the poor say, I am rich, because 
Sundays and I forget everything for practice. Oh, you know, you've been there. That's why she's not there now. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you now to thank you for this day and this time to fellowship and to hear your message. We ask that you be with Wayne as he gives it. Uh, help him give it in a manner that we can hear it. Father, be with us so that we open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts to receive your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. <clears throat> Open your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Philippians, chapter 4. As we all know, there's no anything except family stuff on Wednesday and all day Thursday, okay? Uh, so I just want to make sure it's said, it's, it's printed, and because my sister says she doesn't want people showing up at her house I saying, what's not. going on there? <laughs> with, 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 with Anita living so close, she has the closest key if somebody needs to get in. So. Uh, but Thanksgiving's coming, and uh, Thanksgiving is, I just want to tell you right now, Thanksgiving is my favorite of all holidays. 
There's no presents, you know, not a lot of, not a lot of stress except, you know, getting down to the store now in time to get, get all yeah. the stuff before it sells out. Uh, uh, but it's a family-oriented, friend-oriented uh, holiday. People get together and they just break bread or turkey or... King crab. King crab. Where was my... King crab! Wow. Where are the disfellowship papers? King crab. Uh, where was I? So rudely interrupted. <laughs> But it's always a good time. Always good. I like I like Thanksgiving. Uh, and some little information that uh, about Thanksgiving was, uh, you know, it, the one that we celebrate that started in that 1621 you know, Plymouth Rock, Massachusetts, or Plymouth, Massachusetts, uh, wasn't the only time or the first time that new Americans had got together and had a a, a meal. It was the most memorable one, and it was the one where God was invoked, mostly because it was a religious group. But they had similar ones in Jamestown. Uh, by the way, my I had a family member who came to the Americas at Jamestown. So to trace my ancestry back, I go all the way back to Jamestown. There's a place in Virginia actually called Basie, Virginia. Uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> bunch of Basies running around. Uh, but anyway, so, but this particular one kind of caught on, and uh, it was actually George Washington who established it uh, way back in 17, what was the date I wrote down here? Uh, 1789, President George Washington set the first public day of Thanksgiving and, and prayer. See, that's the thing. This is a day of Thanksgiving and prayer. So many people leave that out. So, uh, but it was actually President Abraham Lincoln who established it to be not on the 26th of November, as did uh, uh, President Washington, but he established it to be on the fourth Thursday of every month. So that's just basic history of, of the uh, Thanksgiving. But one of my favorite of all scriptures is in the book of Philippians. And as you guys know, I, I spent my last three years in the workforce before you guys got a hold of me and worked me to death. Uh, I retired from the Arizona State Prison as the state chaplain. And I had 20 years experience of chaplaincy before that, before I went to the state prison. Uh, but one of my main things as a chaplain at the state prison was I did a lot of counseling. And when you're an inmate and you've turned your life over to Christ, um, you still have problems. Your, your kids at home still get sick. The finances aren't very good. Um, uh, and I did a lot of counseling and people would come to me with their, with their problems. And I found one of my best scriptures to take people when they're having problems is to Philippians chapter 4. Uh, so you've opened your Bible there. Uh, in the Philippians congregation, I guess people were having some problems, and uh, he's named them here, uh, named uh, Erodia and Sinchi, I guess. Sinchi? That's why I appreciate Rob when he's here. He can but he's coming to this whole group of Philippians and he's talking to the people whose names are written in the book of life. I'm reading that in verse 3. Whose names are written in the book of life. It is so easy to counsel people if their names are written in the book of life. Uh, in, in the world, they go see a psychologist, a psychiatrist, or whatever. But when they come to me uh, and they say, here's what I'm going through, here's what's going on in my life, uh, what can we do about it? I don't have to think about anything. I take it straight to the Word of God because I know their names are written in the Book of Life. And if they're not, I would ask them, I said, uh, 
are you saved? Is your name written in the book of life? Do you, have you given your life over to Jesus? Or whatever. And I found that those were times of opportunity for me as a pastor. Uh, chaplain, pastor, whatever. Uh, and I would read them this scripture. Begin reading with me verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. But you don't understand, chaplain, pastor. Uh, my, my life is in shambles. My wife has no money. The kids are sick. Uh, everything's going wrong. I've still got two or three or four years left to do before I can even get out there and help them. You don't understand. What do you mean rejoice? Come on, go back. Rejoice in the Lord always. That doesn't just mean when things start going bad, you stop rejoicing in the Lord. It's always kind of means, uh, what, what's that word? Oh, always. <laughs> always means always. So it doesn't mean that the minute things start going bad, you stop trusting in the Lord or rejoicing. I remember one time it was before a big wedding and uh, Sandy was getting everything ready and uh, she was having problems getting everything over here and everything over here and she was having some problems. I remember this Bible teacher, his name was Jim, way back years and years and years ago. And he came to Sandy, and he said to Sandy, is today a good day to stop trusting the Lord? He's <laughs> with all this stuff. And he ministered more to me than Sandy, you know, and I thought, wow, what a, what a neat thing to remember. When things are going really bad, is that a good time to stop trusting in the Lord? Or is that a time to get on the horse and start riding? When things start going bad, so it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again. Let your gentleness, so you say you're a Christian, let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is at hand. What do you mean the Lord is at hand? Did he die and go up to heaven? No, he's right here with us, right now. His, his presence, he's omnipresent, he's everywhere, he's in your house, he's here with us today. The Lord is at hand, and the implication here is, if he's here, what are you doing about it? Act like it. That's a heavy thing, isn't it? He's here, and he's there with you all the time. The Lord is at hand. Act like it. Of course, that's what I do every Sunday, Wednesday night. Every, I get up on this platform, or I sit there and I teach, and the message, the message intertwined with every message I ever give is, hey, we're all Christians. We need to act like it. And isn't that what we're called to do, to go out there and be a signpost to, to the world? The Lord is at hand. And then he goes on and he says, here's this person. They've come to me, and their whole world is falling apart. And I say, don't be anxious for anything. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, Everything's kind of like that always word, isn't it? Be anxious for, and nothing is kind of like nothing. And everything is like everything. I guess I could have looked up some better synonyms, couldn't I? <laughs> I think we get the idea. It, it, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer, Supplication, this is basically speaking to God with thanksgiving. That's how I got wrapped into this message today. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. One time, one time, I had a, a man come in. I actually had to call him in. He was one of the Christians at the prison and I got word that his wife had just been in a horrible accident his baby was dead so somebody had t-boned his car and it was a drunk driver he was there for his fifth drunk driving he was a young man but he was there for his fifth drunk driving I remember that man, I had to bring him in and tell him, that was my job, I wasn't really pretty part of my job, 
Tell them what had just happened. Your wife's seriously in the hospital right now. I didn't know all the details. But unfortunately, your baby boy is dead. Killed by a drunk driver. I don't know if you believe in the speaking, the gift of tongues or not. We don't use it in the church. I don't believe it's a thing that we use in the church. Some churches do. I did not know how to pray for this person. I laid hands on him. He was crying. I was crying. And I found myself saying things that I didn't even know what I was saying. But the Spirit was just taking hold as we wept together. And I had to tell him to rejoice in the Lord always. That somehow, some way, some shape or form, God is going to turn this thing into good. I gave him Romans 8, 28. I said that God will cause all things to work for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. There's nothing like the Word of God and being thankful to God for being there with you that can go through situations like that. There, there's no place else. You can't go see a psychiatrist. You can't, can't just go get drunk or whatever it is that you would normally do. You need, when you get to a place where things are really bad in everything, you need to praise God. That's not a concept that people out there would understand. But it's what I'm telling everybody here today. And I have found that, that it works for me if I let it work for me. When things get really bad, that's when you need the Lord more than anything in the world. It's easy to praise God when everything's going good. But when things get really bad, that's when you really need the Lord. Let's move on. So, we're to praise God even for the bad things, right? Just like I just said. Um, our job in all of this and everything that comes our way is to be thankful. That's why here we are on Thanksgiving. As you go around the Thanksgiving table and you're saying your prayers, I know you are, you know, we're all believers here, right? And remember who this was given to. The scripture was given to all those people whose names are written in the book of life. As you're going around that, that table on Thanksgiving Day, you probably won't be lifting up Oh, well, thank you for that flu I had last week, Lord. Thank you for that uh, directive to go fix Chris's toilet thing. That, that was a biggie. Uh, you don't tend to list those things. But even right now, even looking back on those things that last week were really kind of a pain in, uh, it was horrible. I won't even go through Arm. it. Arm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was my anniversary on top of all this. Uh, and I don't remember praising the Lord, but when I look back on it, I helped a brother uh, and a sister, Chris and Joyce, uh, in their hour of need, and they were getting better. God had healed me of my sickness, I, and I'm amazed how God worked our church here. Right after I got sick, uh, Don covered for me, and then he got sick. Uh, and, and God... And so looking back on it, I can say, wow, God, you handled each and every little thing. You even gave Sandy and I a little bit of time to go have a hamburger <laughs> on our anniversary. But it's all good. It's all good. I'm standing up here going, wow, God, you got us through that, that week, which was uh, we needed to get through. <clears throat> and even last night, I got a chance to come over here with my, my brother and play guitar until, what, 10 o'clock last night? <laughs> Both Steve and I would look at each other and say, yeah, we needed that. We just needed some time just to kick back and play uh, country western songs. Well, not really. Uh, Steve wants me to start doing rock and roll. <laughs> but we just had a good time. 
And, and so when you, when you look back, you, you're not praising God as you're going through it. But you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, if you can do that, you've made a step in the right direction. I remember Walt. Uh, years ago, we were studying the scripture in James, where it says, count it all joy. And yeah. I preached that message, and we were back over at the school at that time, and Walt went out on his way home that day and had two flat tires. Oh. Just getting up that road that you guys drive on. <laughs> Don't like that road. Uh, and then he called me. He said he had the first flat tire. That was discouraging, he said. And then he just got it fixed on there and he had another flat tire. And he said, then all of a sudden you're, you're preaching. This is one of the few times people tell me it paid off. <laughs> he, said, he said, so I just started praising God. I just started praising God. He said, I still had two flat tires, but I sure felt a whole lot better. <laughs> it's a better way to go home. Oh, let's move on. Our job is to be thankful. And if you do, there's a result. Let's read through what the result is. And the peace of God, which then surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. If you can look at your situations and thank the Lord for your situations. So I know what's going to happen. You guys are going to go home now after this message. Make a list of all the dumb stuff that's happened in the last week or month and, and pray over that on your Thanksgiving table, right? Yeah. yeah. And then give me a call if that's what you do. Because it's a good suggestion. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for all of this and list some bad stuff in there, but then look and see if some of that bad stuff already hasn't been remedied. You know what happened with that man and the baby? His baby went instantly to be with the Lord. His wife got out of the hospital. The man never took another drink in his entire life that I know of. God causes all things to work for the good. We don't always see it. But if you are one of the people, what's it saying? Uh, let me go back. Whose name is in the book of life. Or in the Roman scripture, uh, are one of the people who's called for his purpose. In other words, if you're saved, everything that happens in your life, you can be thankful for. Everything. I'm looking at a third so shoulder oh. surgery here. And I'm having a little bit of trouble being thankful. Uh, maybe I'm ministering to myself here. Uh, no, I, Joe told me I could do anything with it. That's why I, I don't even hang with Joe anymore because I don't want him to catch on to stupidity. Uh, but yeah, as you go through these things, always know that God is there. He's at hand. And he's here, he's here to, to get you through those hard times, it says, because the reward is, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will then guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You know, sometimes if you're really down and down and down, and you can't think of anything good, that's happening in your life, I want to tell you, there is something that's really, really good in your life. Pick up your bulletins. Psalm 118, 23 through 24. You don't have to turn there, just pick up your bulletins. Psalm 18 is is the very center of the Bible. <clears throat> I know if you have different translations, say, wait a minute, it may, may not fall right there. I would bet that in its original form, whatever that would be, because uh, there have been translations since there's been Bibles, that it fell exactly at the very center. Because it's, it's the scripture, but this is the day the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it. 
It says that this was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Do you know that it was even marvelous in God's eyes? And what are we talking about here? We're talking about the day that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, hung on a cross, as painful as that might sound, and God said it pleased him to bruise him. <coughs> it pleased the Father to bruise the Son. You know, we don't even have any concept at all about the great love that God has for us as his children. <coughs> my, my scripture tells me that before the creation of time, God sent his son into, before the creation of time, Jesus hung on a cross, which means he, when Jesus came in, he grew up as a baby, he knew all along from before the creation of time itself that this is what he was going to do. And the Father knew that he was going to send his Son into the world, that he was going to be rejected, but nonetheless, while we were yet sinners, he was going to hang on a cross for our sins. Before I was ever thought of, God knew me, it says, in eternity. This is an amazing love that we can't even comprehend. If you want to be thankful for something, be thankful for this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So if we have a God, we have a God that loves us that much, that even before he created us, he knew we were going to sin, he knew he was going to have to send his son into the world to pay the penalty for our sins. If we have a God that loves us so much, do we not have a God that we can trust when, when we're going through our own agonies, when we lose our, our firstborn son to a drunk driver? We do. So if you want to think about something to be thankful, the first and number one thing that we need to be thankful for is that God sent his son into the world. And this is the day. We used to sing that. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And all the men would go, Hey! This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That's what we can really, really, really be thankful for, that God sent his son into the world to pay the penalty for our sins, that we might be one of those people that I just read about whose name is written in the book of life. Wow. Is that you? There's something you can, after you go through the list of all the rotten things that happened to you this year at the dinner table, Make that list and then say, wow, but God will cause all things to work for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I'm one of those. Wow, thank you, Lord. Because we wouldn't have anything to accept if he hadn't done that. We'd still be lost in our sin. We'd be on a straightaway road to eternity without God. Darkness. If God is light, the opposite is darkness. Good stuff. Hmm. So you start thinking about the best thing that ever happened to you. It's when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, at least once a month we do communion. And what is the command that is given to us when we do communion? It, it's real similar to, we, we lay God's table out here, there's no turkey or anything on it, but there's, there's wine representing God's blood, and there's uh, the bread that represents his body, right? And we come together and we partake of it. It's, it's called the Lord's Supper, it's called communion. And when we do that communion, the commandment that's given to us, the commandment that Jesus gave the night that he was betrayed, was, as often as you do this, remember me. 
God wants us to remember him. And what did he do? He was talking about his body and his blood. We need to remember him in his death and resurrection. Number one thing to be thankful for, because everything else falls underneath that. And when we do that, hmm. says, you are my God and I will praise you. Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. That's if. That's if. You've accepted his grace and his mercy into your life. Uh, Psalm 100 this is one of my favorite psalms here Psalm 100, 1 through 5 look on your boards and read with me make a joyful shout to the Lord all you lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know that the Lord he is God it is he who has made us and we not ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving, into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. We just did that song this morning. I will enter his courts with praise. Do you know what? We could not sing that song, even though it's here in, in the Old Testament. We could not sing that song because we couldn't go into his courts. We could not enter his gate. We could only worship God from afar. Read the Old Testament, my friend. You'll find that worship of God was from afar. Only after, after God gave his son that we might come to him through Christ can we come boldly to the throne of God. Bible says we can now come boldly to the throne of God. We can enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart and we can, we can praise him all day long in his court. How do we get there? We pray. You can all enter into the courts right now of Jesus Christ just by saying, Lord, I want to enter into your gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter your courts with prayer. It says, for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures forever all generations. God promised, I want to read this scripture right here. Psalm 50, 23. The, the scriptures didn't get put in the order of my message. I apologize for that. But uh, go back up to 50, 23. Whoever offers praise glorifies me, and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. Has anybody here seen the salvation of God? You know, that's an interesting word, salvation. You know the first time it was used in the Bible? The children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. And they had backed themselves all the way up against the Red Sea. You know the story. Charlton Heston was there. And <laughs> and they had no choice. If here's come in the, the Pharaoh's army and they're going to kill them. But if they go into the sea, they're going to drown and there they will die. So Moses lifts up his staff. And he says, Behold the salvation of the Lord. And they used a Hebrew word that meant he's going to move things around. The, the changing of scenery, if you will. That's what salvation means in the Hebrew. And guess what God did? He moved things around. He, he parted the Red Sea. He had a causeway. It wasn't real deep. I'm told that that part of the sea is like five miles deep in some places. But it wasn't there. It was, And they went through on dry land. That's salvation. God saves us from the enemy who's coming after us, who's going to kill us. And if we've received that salvation, it says here, uh, whoever offers praise glorifies me, and I offer him salvation. Wow. Want to be thankful to the Lord? 
again, be thankful to Jesus, who gives us something to really, really, really be thankful for. You know, when Jesus was hanging on that tree, he was a man. When Jesus was hanging on that tree, he, he was a man. A man that had the same neural system in his body as do you and I. So that when you poke him, he hurts. When you drive a nail through his hand, it hurts. Now just think about this. Put yourself in the place of God. Put yourself in the place of God. <laughs> You've been around since eternity. You've known that the people you just created are going to cause you to hang on a cross. And you know what pain's all about because you're God. And yet your love is so deep for your creation. That you came, you hung, you paid the penalty. So this year, often I stop to think of just where I'd be had Jesus come down. That cruel tree, there'd be no hope for man, no peace could be found.
this year as you sit around your Thanksgiving table with your friends and family and you've made that long list of all the rotten things that happened to you throughout the year. There's just a lot of them. Just remember, he didn't come down. He stayed on that cross and he paid the penalty for our sins that no matter what and whatever happens in your life, for God calls all things to work for the good for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And if that's you, be thankful. Come on now. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the <clears throat> for everything that you've done for us, Father. We ask that you be with us, Father, as we continue to think about the thanksgivings that you have given us, the many blessings, Father, that you've bestowed upon us. The biggest one, Father, is Jesus, and we thank you for what he has done for us. Jesus, we thank you for obeying your Father and doing what you did for us. May we continue to remember that. Father, as we get ready to disperse, Father, we're going to clean your building here, Father. You ask that you be with us and keep us safe as we're doing this labor here. Be with those that are going home right now, Father. Keep them safe also. Again, Father, forgive us of our sins and our transgressions. And thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 I can do some help, Terry.